This is Tim Taylor, and it's August 10th, uh, 2023, and I want to share with you a word that the Lord spoke to me this morning. I love spending time with Him uh, every day, arising early to pray, but also to spend time in His Word. And I love studying the Word of the Lord because Holy Spirit teaches me, and He can do this with you too. But let me share with you what He showed me this morning out of Job chapter 29, verse 3, which says this, When His lamp shone upon my head, and when by His light I walked through the darkness, when his lamp shone upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness. Does that make you think of anything? It made me think about the images I've seen through the years from where they tried to paint or tried to create stained glass, where they were trying to show the halo around the heads of different saints like Paul or the apostles or different folks that were holy unto the Lord. And it says, when his lamp shone upon my head. And I knew that's what the artists, the prophetic artists were trying to depict. And it says, uh, when it, the, the, this word translated lamp comes from the Hebrew word near. And it also you know, is translated lamp or candle or light. And the very first place, the very first time this word is introduced in the Hebrew is in Exodus 25, where uh, the uh, Lord is talking to Moses about how to design the menorah the candlestick that went in the holy place of the tabernacle of Moses. And it talked about having seven lamps on that candlestick. And so that lamp was a vessel that held oil. And so when his lamp shone upon my head, now the word head, it can mean literally your head, or it can be like the chief, the, the head of a certain organization or a country or whatever, or a captain, but it also can mean, you know, our mind. It can refer to our head, which is where our mind uh, is. And it says, his lamp shone upon my head. Now check out this word shone. I was shocked. It's the Hebrew word halal. It's where we get the word hallelujah from. And this word means to shine, to boast, to be clamorously foolish, to raise, to celebrate, to commend, to make your faith oneself mad. In other words, you're crazy with praise and glory and adoration. And this word in the Hebrew is translated so many times to Praise the Lord. I will praise him in the multitude. I will praise the Lord. I will, his name is to be praised. And this goes on to say, seven times a day I praise you because your righteousness. It goes on to say, let my soul live and it shall praise you and let your judgments help me. And it goes on, and my favorite actually gets back into Psalm 148, Psalm 149, and Psalm 150 because there it talks about praising the Lord. And it says, uh, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him uh, for the sound, with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with loud cymbals. And it goes all about all these ways to praise God. And it says, when his lamp shone upon my head. And what I heard the Lord say was, was this. When we keep our mind stayed upon the Lord and we're constantly praising him, singing songs to him, boasting about him, testifying of him, we're keeping the Lord at the forefront of our mind. And when by his light, I walk through the darkness. And this, my friends, is the key to walking in these dark days. It says, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Well, how do you do that? You keep your mind stayed upon him. You keep your mind filled with the word of the Lord and on his glory and on his goodness and on what his word says. And one of the ways you can do that is by doing what Psalm 1 says. Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delights in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water uh, that brings forth uh, its fruit in season, whose leaf will not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And then it goes on to describe what happens to those who don't do that. But it's so critical that we keep our minds stayed upon him. That's why it's so important what we look at. Now, check this out. I want you to hear what does meditate in the Hebrew mean. And it comes from the Hebrew word Hagah, and it means to Repeat in a soft droning sound while utter, utterly abandoning yourself to outside distractions. 
From this tradition comes a specialized type of Jewish prayer called davening, that is, lost in communion with God while bowing and rocking back and forth. And evidently, this dynamic form of meditation prayer goes back to King David's time. And the thing is, if you've ever seen people at the Western Wall, they have their uh, their uh, Torah in front of them, and they're, they're the word of the Lord, and they're rocking back and forth, and they're softly repeating that word out, uh, out loud. And so, whether it be the Psalms or whatever, and so I just really want to encourage you, when his lamp shone upon my head, again, it makes me think about the Paul and the different saints they tried to depict with a halo around their head. When his lamp shone upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness. My friends, that's the key to walking in darkness today and letting your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So I pray the Lord would bless you with that. I pray that you'd be richly blessed that you hit the mark for the assignment Christ has made you. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Bless you.